for the and the invitation from Petroleum Engineering Associations. It's uh, been nice meeting uh, PEA or Petroleum Engineering Association again. And the last time it was in two years or three years ago, we were collaborating. Now today, uh, it's about it was about rock typing, as I mentioned before. Now it's about natural effects and reservoir characterizations. Thank you for uh, reading my CV. So again, today I would like to present about uh, natural effect reservoir characterizations. It is an integrated approach from petrophysic, geoscience, and engineering approach. Actually, this is was uh, my previous work in the oil industries. Now I, I was uh, I was based in Hungary. Now I moved to Norway last year. But still, this uh, presentation is already published in several uh, publication papers and SPWA, SPE, and also uh, in AIGA. So uh, I think it's uh, there is nothing a problem. You can see also the papers on the right corners that you also can easily to download if you're a member of SPWA, or you also can uh, contact me if you need some uh, the copy of the of the paper. So a little bit what I'm doing here is in Norway, we, we do some uh, consulting. We have also software development. Uh, we do some consulting as many more in more than uh, many, uh, many countries already in the last uh, 30 years. And we also have uh, infrastructure platforms uh, to build the software if it's uh, needed for the subsurface point of view. And also Sandra, it's a core flow simulators. It's already published in, uh, in, uh, in the last 20 years. It's already 40 commercial licenses over the world. And also we have collaborated a lot with the university regarding R&D works together with the core laboratories. So about the presentation today, I will uh, adopting from my previous papers. Uh, it was selected as the one of the best 10 papers in SPWLA in 2022. And also it was a lot of case studies as well that I have done uh, during uh, my tenures in, in uh, uh, ENP companies. So one of the paper that I will present today, uh, it also will be part of the discussion as well. It is extended coming from the papers. It's uh, from Natural Refractor Capital Reserve for Characterization, a case study from uh, Metro Field. The other things that there are also some publication is related with these papers. There are some fracture basement from uh, different papers from AAPG Europe uh, Regional Conference. There are two papers was submitted, and also from SPE paper in 2021, and also uh, in 2023 uh, last year, one of the paper also related with uh, fracture uh, naturally fracturized for characterization, integrating from image log interpretation until uh, rock typing and reservoir modeling uh, based on the seismic attribute also in, in, in presented. So uh, feel free to, to find some uh, information from these publications. So presentation uh, today, the outline, it, it will be start with introductions, the background of the field case study, and also how we integrated the approach from geoscience and engineering in order to have a better plan for creating the reservoir model in order to make a better field development plan and propose new field development plan in the, in the old or major fields. So, and then uh, I will talk about the field overview, about the data set that we implemented, the methods regarding the study workflow, the fracture facies, and one of the most important about the result and analysis, how we work on it with the petrophysic, 3D static model and the 3D dynamic model in more best practice approach. And I will close with the conclusions. Let's start with the all of you. So fracture basement uh, is already quite well known all over the world, which is one of the really complex reservoir behavior, really hard to identify, really complex to evaluate regarding the subsurface properties because of the complexity of the pore system in, uh, in the fractures reservoirs. Typically for sandstone reservoir, we, we also, also utilize the, the approach which is quite conventional using a porosity permeability approach because uh, typically in the matrix porosity system, it's uh, easily to evaluate it. But in the fracture basement, sometimes it's combination with many kinds of reservoir rocks. And the fracture itself, typically it is uh, generated from mechanical 
process, even though there are some chemical process as well, created some fractures, but the most dominant is coming from the mechanical. In geology, uh, some mechanical approach is related with the stress. So this stress is, will be connected with the deformation. And this deformation will create it some fold and fall. If you have folding, uh, some of the fracture will be accumulated in several uh, maximum stress uh, distributed. Typically, in the top of the folding, you will see more fractures, but less uh, until going to the flank. But for fault related fractures, it is related with the fault. Typically, if you get a fault, you will see a couple of fractures surrounding the fault and it will be connected. But in the real case study, it can be combined between fault and fault related structure, but we will see how much the dominant. So uh, one of the good uh, examples from, uh, from Nelson, they, he made the classifications, how we can classify our fractures. There are some reservoir is uh, combined with matrix and fractures, but some, some of them is only one. For example, type one here, you don't have any matrix porosity, only fracture porosity. It can be considered as a single porosity, a single permeability system, or only fractures. But some of them without any fractures, but typically only dominant by the matrix. And some of them is combined. And you call it as a dual porosity system, or even can be a dual permeability system. That also can be a challenge for reservoir uh, or uh, subsurface expert in order to characterize the, the reservoir properties. So how we can observe the fracture itself? The, the fracture itself, it can be observed from many kind of scale, from nanoscale, micro scale, until a mega scale or giga scale. If you see the seismic, you will see the fault. Fault is part of the fractures, something fracked, something cracked in the rocks. So you can easily to see the fault, which is very big fracture that we can see. The fault itself, it can be identified through the seismic, and some of them is cannot be identified through the seismic, then they call it sub-seismic fault. But the more detail, we also can see uh, some fracture identification, like from the well test responses, uh, from the well lock images, from core data, from outcrops, or even from the micro fracture can be identified through the thin section measurement using a microscope. So by combining this data, there are some data is direct measurements. There are some indirect, which is interpreted. How we can connect it, this kind of big scale of fractures? Because if you take the data only considering from the core data, it cannot be represented in the whole system in your reservoir because there are some fractures it cannot be taken by the core only. But if you see from the big scale, from the seismic itself, you also hard to identify because some of the, of the fracture it cannot be seen by the seismic which is only can be seen from the image look. And some of them as well from the image look, it's not fully you can see the really micro fracture exit until you have the, the course data. So by combining this approach, how we can utilize the data in order to have a better reservoir characterization regarding uh, creating a better model for field development plan for your reservoirs. So this is one of example, it's coming from Hungary. Uh, this is a fracture basement carbonate. It is really highly fractured, really related fault. And also not only the complexity of the rocks, but also we have complexity of the oil. The rock itself, it's coming from the triacic carbonate, mostly dolomite limestone combinations with the highly fractured breccia. And also with wax coming also in uh, fractures. The average porosity is kindly unconventional. It's only around four persons porosity, but the permeability is really high. It's up to 70 Darcy or 40,000 milli Darcy. The trap itself is combination between structure and myosin bar cap rock and driving mechanism. We have really strong water drive with the gas cap in the saturated conditions. First discovery for well number four, it's located the most Southern of the field. Now it's already more than the 36 well are drilled. Currently, it was uh, produced, I mean, at that moment in 2022, the production rate is only around 80, 90 cubic meter per day or around 600 barrel oil per day from 12 wells. You can imagine uh, this is produced very low rate. Why? Because we have a heavy oil here. 
we have high pore point oil. It is frozen in the surface with really high paraffin and high CO2 content with the high H2S as well. Make not only complexity in the rocks, but also with the fluid system. It makes us to have a really comprehensive evaluation in order to make a decision to field, uh, to make a field development plan in this field. So what we have in the data set, we have core and log data. There are 36 well drilled. 40% is from the old type of Russian log uh, data, which is very hard to interpret it with the current, uh, current uh, conventional well logs data. And we also have some triple what combo conventional logs and only two image logs. Can you imagine with the complex reservoir with the fracture, we only have two image logs. And this is also from the old technology of image log based on the CBIL or acoustic based uh, image logs. So about the core data, unfortunately, uh, fortunately, we have a lot of core data was taken from the old previous projects. Many wells was taken from the fractures with the different fracture type. There are some fractures with the crackle type, some of them with the chaotic types or even in the mosaic types, combination with the uh, fracture breccia, uh, macro fracture and micro fracture that we can see here. The other things that we also have some uh, fracture which is filled by cements. Cement can be clay, it can be a calcite cement, or even the fracture, it's already grown with the, some intercrystalline uh, from quartz. It seems that the, there are some uh, uh, hydrothermal activity was uh, seen uh, during the, the degenesis of the rocks. But the most difficult one, we don't have scale data. And most of the core data is coming from dynamic full diameter core displacement. Because if you measure from the core plug, you will not see anything. What you will see is only pipe rock, low porosity, low permeability. But in the system, actually, it can be up to 70 Darcy. So what we can see from our core data, from the Triassic basement carbonate, the porosity range is only 2 to 8% that you can see here, the distributions, the permeability from the core is only up to two Darcy's, but actually in the real well test, we can see it can be up to 70 Darcy's or 70,000 milli Darcy. In average, more or less around 350 milli Darcy from the well test that we can find from this reservoir. And water saturations is a bit tricky, but from the conventional approach that we have in house, we have the, the range of the water saturation around 37 to 53%, which is it's quite pessimistic. Uh, saturations. Typically, we know that saturation in a fracture, it could be really low, but it depends how the fracture it should be. If you have a big fractures uh, or even a high upper the fracture, you will can get the water saturation very, very low, or maybe there is no water saturations exist. But for this type of highly rich micro fractures, it's behave like a matrix that we call it this one as a pseudo matrix. And this is also behalf with the specific water saturation is quite high. So that's why uh, the ways we define the water saturation is a bit tricky. Then also we can have a discussion after this meeting. And the other things that uh, it is always difficult, as I mentioned, to get the core flux. Because if you take the core flux here, probably the, the, the rocks will be broken. And the other things will not represent in the whole reservoir system. And the other things of the information, as I mentioned, uh, there, there is a various fracture type. There are open fractures, which is clear open fracture. You can even can see from your eyes. But there are also some fractures. It is already filled with the clay or even marl content. And it is closing the fractures. Some of them is partially open. Uh, we call it prop fracture here. And uh, it is some of the quartz is growing inside the fractures. So it's, it's a little bit behave like a matrix behavior as well here. And the other things, also some foggy uh, was generated. There was a fracture and then uh, cemented by calcite. And then this calcite is already washed again and creating some fogs. These fogs also play a little bit different regarding the flow behaviors. So from this kind of complexity of behavior, it's tried to, to force us to understand uh, how to make the model in a better way. It's not really 
uh, a headache complicated with the very limited data, but still makes sense in order to have a better field development plan. So what we have to do, we try to understand every single uh, log resources together with the data that we have. Typically, if we have, well, you have a conventional logs, good if you have image log, this is really important for factor behaviors. What you need the data is important for you others for uh, this, uh, fracture uh, investigation. You need full web sonic data or even combine together with the acoustic and also resistivity image. The other thing is that uh, we need the full webs. We can see the Stonely web analysis as well, how the chevron shape affecting uh, to the fracture reasons. And one of the most important is to run production log. We will see where is the fracture is open and contributing the productions. Uh, we will also understand where is the fracture is closed, not contribution to the production and so on. And from here, we also can combine with the drilling parameter. This is just additional data and also some core data. Typically, if you have big open fractures, let's say from image, you can see clearly here. You will see also the response of your uh, density logs. And the other things, it should be confirmed as well from the Stonely web. There is a, a lot of saffron shape here. It's a lot of fractures uh, presence. And what is to prove it, the fracture is open. There is a flow, contribution flow in the certain of the, of, of the interval. By combining these responses, what we need to know to classify the fractures, where is the fracture is open macro fractures, where is the fracture it is only small contribution to the flow and also not too much big uh, fracture presence from the image. We call it the open micro fractures. And the other, some of the fractures can be seen, but they are sealed. They are closed by the cement stations. So we also can make the classification as a field fracture or sealed fracture or tight rocks or host rock. So from this combination as well, we try to validate it with the core data, some of the open fractures. We typically, we have a lot of uh, fracture from our core, or even we have very low recovery from the core itself. Some of the micro fracture, it will be really like a fracture breccia. You also can see it's really high micro fracture density. And some fracture silt, you also can see from the core, they are totally closed. But in the mature and all field challenge, Typically, you have no limited or even very limited image logs data, no production logging, and the other thing that uh, we have a limited full web sonic data. So what we have to do, try to understand the log responses. As I mentioned, in many kind of case study, if you see a lot of fracture from your image, you will see also the response from your conventional logs. Any kind of open fracture is excess, you will see your density will be typically will be reduced together with the other parameters. Why density is important? I will explain you in the next uh, slide. Many kind of the case study as well. This is closed fracture. Typically, your lock, it will be not respond a lot. You can see the density lock here is just flat. And here you will see some undulations, some of the movement of your density due to the fracture physics. This is really contrast from the density. There are also some contrast from the resistivity, for example, here, or also some gamma ray and so on. But density has a special uh, issue here. The other things, one of the publications from Bonte 2019 from the Tonalite in Lancaster, UK, we also can see how the density responses and uh, together with the neutron, when we see the uh, big fractures open here. You can see 45 centimeter apertures, very, <laughs> very big fractures. And the other one is a micro intense fracture. Also, can here you can see the response of your density is much lower. So, some of the case study as well here, you also can see some many fracture is responding the your conventional loss. The density together with fractures is also connecting with this. And also some of the case study in Vietnam, fracture granite from uh, Bin Jiang Li in 2004, they also can connect it, the conventional log, the image log, and also production logging. How the impact of the fracture presence together with the response of your density logs and also with the other conventional logs. This is really have a good strong response regarding the presence of the fractures. 
So what we have to do then? Since we have a conventional logs, if you don't have any image log and so on, so you try to consider your density log or even conventional logs. And every log has a different resolution vertically. This is uh, in uh, general that already summarized by uh, Denis Ferreira and Torres Berlin in 2012. The race, the vertical resolutions of every log. Density is part of the most sensitive here, comparing with the other logs. But if we compare with the resistivity, like the micro, micro logs, they even have a higher resolutions. But resistivity log is really uh, sensitive with the fluid saturations and also together with the workhole conditions. So that's why a density can be most uh, preferable here to use it. So why? In my previous paper as well, it's already proved that the density has a really good connection with the prison of the fractures. If you have big fracture, you will have big density uh, changing. If you have small fractures, the density is less. But if your fracture less than 20 centimeter resolution, then you will not see anything. For example, here, there are some macro fracture, but you cannot see as well, but uh, the density is not moved anywhere. But I might try to uh, make some classification here. If you have fracture characterization, what you need to identify for the fracture size, and then the second orientation, fluid field inside the fracture and fracture type. If you are macro fractures, orientation is perpendicular or not parallel, let's say, and then the fracture type is open, you will see a detectable fractures based on the conventional logs, which is, you can see this kind of as a reference. <laughs> but if your fracture is macro and then it is parallel, or even the fracture is closed, it will be a different responses. Typically, you will have some challenge here to see how's the fracture behaviors. But still, it will be based on the experience in the field, how you also can see the behavior of the reservoir performance and combine how is the fracture that you can identify from the well. So this kind of response, if you have open fractures, you will see typically your density will be lower, typically uh, from your data. And the other thing you will see the caliper is a bit higher because of uh, open uh, fractures, if it's quite big. Some of them are broken uh, surrounding the wells. So you will see the typical of caliper is higher. But you also need to identify from your from your uh, DT or sonic logs. Typically, you will have a higher slowness between the shear wave and the compressional wave. And it will be a good as well to see the ratio between the unfracture and also the fracture zone with this ratio. Typically, you will see some of the responses like this. The PF. It can be depends on what you mark. If you have a heavy weight mark, you will see higher PEF. But if it's light weight mark, you will see lower PEF. So with the varying resistivity as well, it depends. What is the mark that you use? Or even what reservoir field is there? If it's a hydrocarbon, you will see this kind of behavior. MSF value will be higher, and then LL will be lower. But in the five part size, you are uh, using a brine, you will see lower uh, responses here together with the other cross fracture and so on. This combination of fracture behavior can help you to identify the fracture behaviors. In a simple way, <laughs> this is one of the crops. You can see the response of your density log with the sonic slots, which is also connected with the prison of the fractures. Then this is the way you can easily to identify the fractures uh, by only using the conventional logs data if you don't have image log data. So what we have to do to evaluate it, the big field that's only have two image logs data here. So what we try to do, we try to identify the, the fracture responses from the baseline of the density together with the gamma ray as well. Since we are working with the carbonate fracture, it can be easy to identify using a carbonate. When we have a really low gamma ray, we are in the carbonate phase. And the other things that what we need to evaluate is only the density responses and try to make uh, connected with the image log data. Since we only have two image log data and we try to connect with our density, so we can uh, connect it. Where is the fracture was coming from? We only make the three group here. Macro fractures with the red color, micro fracture with the orange, and the blue is a host rock or unchanged rock or non-fracture rocks. So what, how it can be used here? Macro fracture, it can be really high permeability. 
it can be in dorsis. But in the micro fractures, typically it is uh, uh, not really high, not really low, but the range could be around one to 100 millidarsis. But if you are in the matrix or in the uh, protolite or host rocks, you will see permeability almost zero or it is tight rocks. But what you need to identify, you see from the wells. But what happens if your field doesn't have Roby or gamma ray or density on gamma ray from your field? This is what we do. We try to evaluate it through the machine learning. We call it self-organizing map tiers. We try to, to integrate uh, the data having a density with the other loss parameters. There are three models implemented here. We do the training with the different wells uh, types and also with the different uh, data and model input based on the availability of the reservoirs. And from here, we can try to make the input uh, with the uh, Years. And then we train the model based on the data that's available with the density with the image box. And from here, we can identify macro and micro fractures into the model. And, and then uh, through the self organizing map uh, predictions, semi supervised machine learning, we can evaluate how is the fracture distribution that it's given from the machine learning. So from here, we try to distribute it into the, our vertical wells. This is one of example from well W3. It's located in the western of the field. You have the reservoirs. You have the conventional locks. And also, you only have uh, density locks here. We don't have image locks. The result of the prediction of the fractures, the red is the macro fractures, yellow is macro micro fracture rich, and the blue is host rocks. What we can identify here? We can combine with the core data. There are a lot of red color here. There are then yellow colors. It's a combination of macro and micro fracture. We have core data here. It was taken around eight meters. And then, yes, we can see even by your eyes, with our eyes, that the fracture exists from our core data. And the other things, how about the well doesn't have a fractures? It uh, doesn't have a well data. We have a well test data here. You can see number seven, number one, intercal which is a selective well test. We can see the production was coming around, around 74 uh, meter cubics per day in this zone. This active bracited zone. If you go deeper here, this is blue. Why? Because there are some uh, carbonate is already close by the mar content or clay content makes the gamma ray is quite high. Meaning that you will have a blue color here. When we do the flow test here, you can see two of the tests here show zero flow or no inflow. And the other type as well here, mostly reached by the micro fractures. And then you can see the production is also less. So this is the way we identify the fracture if you don't have image logs data. What happens if you only have limited data, you only have short camera, long SP log, caliper, and diffractivity, we still can also predict that one uh, quite well by using our uh, network model through self-organizing math. And you can see here, the red is a macro fractures, micro and so on. And then we have the core data confirming this area. You can see it's a lot of red and orange color. You will see the fractures from and differentiated from the core data in the top. During the deeper of the wells, Less fracture, less red color, meaning more uh, yellows. It is mostly rich uh, from micro fracture. Yes, this is what we also can see from our core data. And from the deeper part, you see it's uh, much more blue colors. And also you can see that most of the fracture is already close in this area. So what we have to do, we can identify in the well. Now we try to understand how does the 3D spaces of the fracture is distributed. So we combine the concept from the uh, fracture phases concept distribution based on the fault zone concept, which is proposed by Torabi et al. And also from uh, Fosen in 2016, 2019. What we have done here, we, we try to implement it to define the, the distance of the fracture distributions based on the fault throw that we are uh, can uh, uh, can see from the seismic. So what we can distribute it. We have fault displacement and also four fault thickness together with the damage zone. What we need to do to define the damage zone area and also define the, the thickness of the fault core by combining this method. What we do last time, we consider one one based on our database. So if we have 
uh, one meter or 10 meter displacement from your fall displacement here, you will see also the, the damage zone is around 10 meters. If you are 100, then you will see also the effect of hundreds. This is the way we combine the concept model from here. The other things that we also try to implement at seismic attribute, we call it tenfold likelihood here, in order to distribute the fractures in the spatial area together with the fall zone uh, concepts. Through the years, we combine the concept together with the geological concept, with the seismic attributes, until that we can define how the fracture should be distributed in the 3D spatial. You can see here the black line, it is the well which already drilled. And then uh, we already predict all of the fracture distribution from the wells, and then we distribute also in the 3D spaces. So how about the skull data? Skull data is a bit tricky. The skull data is really important for reservoir simulation model in order to have a better uh, flow behaviors and also to make a better history match. In here, we, we consider the skull data from many open sources or even published paper. Some of them propose with the X shape of relative permeability, some of them with the curvy shapes. Actually, why it's important? Because we already classify three types of fractures, macro fractures, uh, micro fracture switch and also host rocks and also some between in the combinations. So that's why in here we try to generate it a fracture behavior. If you are in the fault core, mostly open fractures, you will have the X shape of relative permeability that you also can see here. But some of them in the medium size of uh, fracture, it should be curvy. It cannot be X shape many kind of uh, uh, publications I have mentioned here, including the recent one in 2015 and 2019, how the fractures uh, rocks, it's not telling in the X shape or if it should be a little bit curvy. The other things that we have already four groups here in the model, and then we try to distribute it here into the, in the model. So what is the good thing here? We run into the reservoir simulations. You can see how the, the model can easily improve our history matching from oil, gas, water, and also from the pressures. You can see here as well, not only in the field scale, even in the well pet match, it gives a really good matching quality from all of the uh, wells that we use during the simulations, even the long history match or even in the short history match. So this kind of combinations of the static petrophysic until the dynamic model make a really good uh, understanding for us in order to develop our reservoirs uh, in the good way and also make a better decision to do the field development. The most interesting is here is uh, quite difficult to evaluate is the pressures because we have really strong water drive. Whenever we have a strong water drive, it can be easily to get the water breakthrough. And the other things that one, it is hardly to evaluate the in-place volume. The other things that you can see in well four, it was really high producer. Wow, it can be up to 100 cubic meter per day for one well, but it's simply dropped when the water is coming. And now it is only produces around five, two to five cubic meter per day because of the uh, water conning is come very quickly. But there are also some unique behavior. Well, 17, for example, it was produced quite good and then reduced and then back again increasing. And this well, it's never produced with the water. Can you imagine in the well 17, which is located very close with well 25, the behavior is totally different. So that's why this is a really interesting uh, model that we implemented. Make this approach have a good history match between these two wells because of this uh, this uh, sophisticated approach. And then we are planning for the field development plan. There is some uh, considerations regarding proposing the well. If you see very close directions from these outcrops, if you only drill the well in the vertical, probably you will hit the very less fracture or even no fractures. But if you drill the well more deviated, you will hit more fractures. This is the simple concept that we implemented during the, uh, during the field development plans in this field. And also when you are also taking the fractures,
structures score data. It is also a bit tricky. If you drill only a couple of meters, let's say you see this is the distance 30 centimeters, meaning that this is around one meters, one or two meters uh, distance. If you take the core here, you will see nothing. You don't see any fractures. But if you drill here, you will see a lot of fractures together with here. So that's why instead of having a vertical well, it's really recommended to have a deviated well in order to get as much as fracture as possible from the uh, conceptual uh, properties. This is also proof from many kind of case studies. For example, uh, from a paper from uh, Bontir et al. in 2019 in, in uh, Lanchester, they propose the deviated uh, wells and they can also see the fracture based on the Shakespeare attribute. They use MFRAC, for example, here. How the fractures, possible fracture can be seen from the seismic attributes, and then also combined with the fractures that's coming from the image logs data. You can see this green and yellow. And the other thing is that when they do the well test and run the production logging, they also can see how the distribution of the fractures is connected with the production logging. But there are also some challenge here. Some of the fractures, uh, the production logging is not to give uh, really uh, same result, but a couple of running is needed to, to make the understanding of the fracture behaviors. And it is also uh, sometimes it's not uh, enough to run production logging only one time. And also you can see here how the, uh, the comparison between the horizontal well and incline well connected with the production performance. Uh, so that's why in here I can make a strong summary that we need a deviate well in order to get the fracture as much as possible. So what we have do, we have tried to propose our well at the time. There are a lot of wells already drilled and mostly is vertical well. Only two well was drilled in horizontal. This is well number six and well number three, W3B. In this well, it was success. Previously, it was failed. So it doesn't mean that if you drill horizontal, you will get the fractures. If you don't get the proper concept, you will get nothing. Like example in this field. One we have a good and one is not good. Now we propose in this area. First, what, what we propose in this area, we already identify from many wells it's already drilled. We can evaluate it where is the green star here. It is represent the fracture is open. And there are some uh, magenta color here. This is the fracture, it's typically closed. And the other one is some well, it's predicting it's open, but it's already produced water. So from this area, we make the delineation and we know the target where we have to drill. Now I propose last time in this magenta line, we call it well number seven. And then we will see from the, from the post uh, model, with the thin fold likelihood attributes, you can see as well, a lot of fracture will be uh, will be heated based on the seismic attribute. And then this is the, you can see, this is our gas oil contact and this is gas water contact. So we exactly try to drill uh, between in the middle of this. And then yes, we drill it. What we found, a ridge of fracture is uh, penetrated through this well number seven. And it was really surprised that the fracture is even much more than we expected. And the other thing is that the concept of the fracture direction, it is what we are expected uh, through the image uh, hole. And then we also can see that the, the interpretation of the image is also really, really clear by using the rest of the image look that we run in the first time in this field. And then what we have to do, we try to compare they predicted from the model before it's drill. So before we drill, we're creating the model. You can see the blue line of the porosity and saturations. And what we see, accidentally, when we see our drill well, it is exactly almost similar, identical with the model that we created. It means that the model that we generated here is quite robust and with a really strong confidence that our model is really good to, to evaluate it from before drilling. Uh, we almost have a really good match regarding porosity and uh, and the saturations. What is the difference is only the top of the reservoir. You can see here we are expecting in the green line, but actually it is 80 meter deeper, which is in the yellow line. But it's still a good point that we are not hitting the 
where it takes off the gas cap because the gas cap is full of the CO2 and H2S. And then we produce the well test. You can see, this is the oil. It's like the black anaconda is coming from this well. The daily rate from this well test was 440 cubic meter per day or 880. And you can imagine if we compare with the current existing well at that time, it was only 80, 90 cubic meter per day from 12 wells. Only from one well, it can be produced 140. It's meaning that uh, it's a really big fish that we got uh, from this uh, concept. So if we are comparing again, many well was drilled in the vertical from the long history. And we learned a lot of things, a really beneficial thing in the, in the past uh, 50 years. And then the new well was drilled here. If we compare with the earlier well, from the well number six and well number three, number three was dry, was drilling in this part. And you also can see from the model, the fracture is less, mostly from the gray. The fracture is uh, mainly is coming from this uh, orange, red, and the yellow. So that's why when we three compare with this one, well number three, eight, it was dry well. What we can see from image log, only a couple of fracture is presence. You can see this is the open fracture that we can identify from the image because of the fracture is not exist here. This is what we also can see from our model. And then we drill well number three, six in the 2006. They have quite a lot of well fractures coming. The well was produced around 300 uh, barrel oil per day at that time uh, when it was tested. And what is coming out of new wells with a new concept, new approach, we will even get more fractures. You can see a lot of fractures here. Almost every uh, centimeters that we got, there are a lot of fracture prisons. And what is also connected, it is proportionally uh, connected with the number of fractures together with the production. It is even triple, almost triple, uh, more than double uh, of the rate is coming uh, from this, uh, uh, these sections when we do the balthus. So what is the good story here uh, that I can compute? Through this fracture identification by using a conventional lock, we also can classify simple micro, macro, and host rock uh, fracture distributions, and also by using self-organizing map, we can also implement it in the limited pathological information to have a really valuable result regarding fracture modeling. The other thing is it's really good for opportunity as well, for everybody to work to and also to identify the fractures in the robust way. But this is typically really good work with the type one fracture from the Nelson, typically for carbonate or quartzite metamorphic rocks or even from some of the fractures doesn't have a uh, really good uh, uh, complex lithology. If you're dealing with the complex lithology, I would propose to consider with the other locks, not the gamma ray, probably only density uh, standalone, but some try to consider some uh, drilling parameter as well together with the mud locks data. The other thing is uh, it's really good indicators to support for placing the new field development coordinate. And also it's really important as well to, to to make a reservoir model better. The three points what I want to emphasize, fracture facies from this proposed method, it's really effective for, for, for rock typing, for defining net to gross, or even can be uh, uh, laterally distributed as well in the fault zone concept, lithology, and for the likelihood seismic attributes. But there are also a challenge. It's not the perfect method. There some probably not properly uh, work in the washout zone if you have a dual porosity permeability. But uh, I also can propose the other method in uh, the other presentations, but it's it's not uh, today. But you also can see from my published paper in ARG how we can consider dual porosity system to evaluate the uh, the the fracture facies through the mineralogy con different mineralogy content. And also there are some limitations. Differentiation between drilling in the structure, natural fracture, fracture orientations, directions, and azimuth are still missing with this method. But if you have a complex uh, image logs data, it can be really help to support your model. So uh, I also can uh, propose you some of uh, 
EOR and also CCS proposal as well. It's been really good. It was presented in my previous paper last year's in SCCS conference. How in our fracture basement is also a really good uh, place to to run the CCS, and also uh, it's worked with uh, a very good study. I think that's all. I think we have uh, uh, ten to fifteen minutes 